Welcome back to the Economic Analyst channel. In this video, I'm going to give you an update on the yield curve and what's been happening to it and why that's relevant to the economy today. So uh, one way to measure the yield curve, the most commonly way that markets do, is to compare the two-year treasury rate to the 10-year treasury rate. This equation that I have here on the Fred chart is subtracting the two-year treasury interest rate from the 10-year treasury interest rate. Typically speaking, longer-term maturities on bonds are supposed to trade at a higher interest rate than shorter-term maturities. But when the yield curve becomes inverted, that is, the shorter-term interest rates are higher than the longer-term interest rates, in the United States, that has been a perfect predictor of economic recessions. And you can see that clearly on this chart that whenever the two-year treasury is higher than the 10-year treasury, so the yield curve is inverted or negative on this chart here, going all the way back to the 1970s, and actually you can track this back to the 1950s post-World War II, the yield curve has always inverted right before every single economic recession that the U.S. has had. So you can see this right before the 1980 recession, and then again right before the 1982 recession, right before the 1991 recession, right before the 2000 recession, right before the 08 recession. And then now, here's why I'm bringing this to your attention. The yield curve has inverted again, and it started to invert in the beginning of July. So although technically the U.S. economy is in a recession, and you can actually see very quickly that the yield curve inverted very, very lightly in just a touch in in uh, March and April, which could have, you might, for yield curve theorists, might want to look at that as a prediction of today's recession. We are seeing the inversion now, and since they have predated every single recession, this to me is going to hallmark a coming recession in the next couple of years if this remains predictive. Now, I'm going to go over my own thoughts on why I've, I think this might be predictive or not and uh, give you my own take on this. Of course, I've covered this in a couple of previous videos, but I'm going to recap here um, as I move on. What I think is going on and what should be used is not the two-year treasury to balance against the 10-year. I think it really should be the federal funds rate. And the reason why is because when you compare the federal funds rate to the two-year treasury, the two-year treasury, in my humble opinion, is more of a market expectation of where the federal funds rate is heading. So let's take a look at the mid-2000s here. This gives us a better idea. When we take a look at the interest rates in the mid-2000s comparing the two-year treasury rate in red to the federal funds rate in blue, we can see how the two track very well together. And to me, the federal funds rate is controlled almost solely by the Federal Reserve when it buys and sells government bonds inside of the market through open market operations to raise and lower this interest rate. And yes, this does have an effect on the two-year treasury because obviously if shorter term interest rates are going up, longer term interest rates are going to go up. Otherwise, there's an arbitrage opportunity to buy into shorter term securities and make more money off of that through the returns off of higher interest rates. But nevertheless, when you take a look at this, look how the two-year treasury rises at a time before for the federal funds rate increases, and they tend to top off together as well. So when we take a look at the previous cycles, look how this two-year treasury tracks with it, and you'll see that it tends to rise before the federal funds rate rises. It stays above that, and then it tops off where the federal funds rate ceiling is reached. In other words, the two-year treasury could be looked at as a forward guidance by the market of expecting where the federal funds rate will be at some point in the future. So when we take a look at the post-2008 scenario, we see how the two-year treasury was trading at a premium to the federal funds rate. Why? Because markets were expecting that the unprecedented measures that the Federal Reserve had taken to lower interest rates down to zero would soon be lifted after the recession recovered. But it turned out that Ben Bernanke 
kept interest rates at zero on the federal funds level. So what did the two-year treasury rate did? It finally tracked lower and lower and lower down to this federal funds rate level. Well, when Janet Yellen came in and, and uh, started talking up the policy of normalizing interest rates and the U.S. economy had recovered from the 2008 recession, there became the expectation that interest rates were hiking. And sure enough, when, when Jerome Powell came in as chairman of the Fed, the two-year treasury started to lift along with the federal funds rate. Well, look at what's going on now post the pandemic the two-year treasury is lifting in tandem with the federal funds rate. So right now, the two-year treasury is trading at a premium to 3.3%. The federal funds rate is at 2.3%. What's that telling us? It's expecting that the federal funds rate will lift to 3.3%. And if it doesn't, then the two-year treasury will trade at a discount back down to this federal funds rate level. So going back to the federal funds rate yield curve, comparing it to the 10-year treasury, it is also predictive of every single recession going all the way back to the 1970s. You can even see the dip here in the mid-1960s, and at that time, we did receive one quarter of negative GDP growth. We just never got two quarters back-to-back, -back, and so technically there wasn't a recession, but we did have a slowdown in the economy. Now, what's going on with the federal funds rate yield curve? Well, it hasn't inverted to the 10-year treasury yet. It's closed. It closed in on it in August, and since then, uh, the 10-year treasury has bounced back somewhat, but uh, it has not inverted yet, yet because the two-year treasury has inverted to the 10-year, that is telling me that, it is, that the market is expecting that federal funds rate to lift over 3.3%. And when it does, if the, unless if the 10-year treasury starts trading at, an, at a higher interest rate, that will invert that yield curve. One last thing to note is that it's not just the 10-year treasury compared to the federal funds rate that inverts, it is also the 30-year treasury rate that inverts to the federal funds rate. And whenever the federal funds rate trades at a higher interest rate to the 30-year treasury, going all the way back to the 1970s when 30-year treasury rates were first created and, and collated, it has also inverted before every recession. And so therefore, that's the real hallmark to look at. When we take a look at the 10 years and 30 years, they track very well together. And you can see right now that the two are tracking very closely together. Right now, the 30-year treasury rate is tracking at about 0.15% higher than the 10-year treasury rate. But either way, the two-year treasury rate is trading at a higher interest rate to both. And so therefore, this is kind of marking, you could use this hybrid 10-year, 30-year treasury rate as the market rate of, of an aggregate interest rate to say that this is the measuring stick of when the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates too high for the economy to handle. Now, all that being said, and I'm going to go into my uh, debt default model here, I have created my own take on this, and that is that um, I don't tend to use the yield curve as the ultimate predictor of economic recessions because I don't believe that there's just this magical formula to predict recessions. Nevertheless, I cannot deny how predictive the yield curve is in predating every single recession without fail. It tends to do this. When you have a sustained drop in a, of a negative yield curve for months, and we're on month number two right now in this yield, negative yield curve, that tends to be predictive of a recession, especially if it inverts between the federal funds rate and the 10 or 30 year treasury. So I created my own take on this by tracking default rates against um, a default rate model using interest rates, debt, and GDP and all this. It too has been predictive. However, the problem with my default rates model is twofold. One is, is that there's not enough data predating the 1980s to take a look at longer term interest rates, such as fanning out mortgages and credit cards and student loans and vehicle loans and all of the types of debt and commercial loans. I have to use the federal funds rate and really I'm using the bank prime loan rate as the measuring stick here. But the most important thing is, is that before 1980, the default rates model is not predictive. So it's only predictive of recessions going all the way back to 1980. After that, it is no longer predictive. So therefore, the yield curve has a much longer track record of predictability with economic recessions than my default rates model. 
So which one's the one? Which one's the better one to use? I honestly don't know. I'm just using my default rates model because it, it to me at least has an advantage of aggregating economic data rather than just comparing a correlation that has happened in times past. Nevertheless, this negative yield curve has served to be a, a very reliable indicator inside of the United States economy at predicting recessions. So it's definitely something to pay attention to. So once again, when we take a look at the two year compared to the 10 year, it inverts before every recession. But the same is also true between the federal funds rate and the 10 year treasury as well. So that's to be kept. And if I were a betting person, I would be tracking more of what's going on with the federal funds rate than the two year treasury. Because if I was, I've relayed here in this video, I think the two year treasury is just what markets expect the federal funds rate to be. So the federal funds rate is really the harbinger here with a 10 year treasury being used as the measuring stick to tell you when's the interest rates too high in the US economy. Right now we are hovering close to a real inverted yield curve. We're just not yet there yet. But if, if the two year treasury is any type of predictor on this, we will soon invert in the coming months unless if the Federal Reserve does not hike interest rates up above 3.3% as of now. And, but based off the rhetoric that has been coming out of the Federal Reserve through Jerome Powell, it seems that the Federal Reserve is still going to be keeping the foot on the brakes right now so we can expect higher interest rates in the coming quarters, if not the coming months, and sooner or later that will most likely invert the yield curve. Then we will see how this plays out to predicting an economic recession. So let's say that we do get an inverted yield curve. How long when that yield curve inverts does it predate a recession? Well, going back to the 1980 recession, it, it inverted in 1978. We didn't go into a recession until basically a year and a quarter later. It inverted in October or September of, two, of 1978, and it was 15 months later that we officially entered a recession. Then the yield curve inverted in October of 1980, actually about September of 1980. We didn't go into a recession until July of 1981. So that was a little bit closer. That was about nine months, 10 months before the recession. The last one was 15 months. Going to the next recession, looks like the yield curve inverted in the beginning of 1989, but we didn't go into a recession until the middle or July of 1990. So that was about um, nine months, okay? No, it was about a year and a half. I'm sorry. It was about a year and a half, not nine months. So about 18 months. Then we go into the yield curve here. It dipped very slightly in 1998. And if you recall, there were some interventions by the Federal Reserve inside of the economy. One was that Greenspan drastically lowered interest rates very quickly before raising them in the 2000, re-inverting that yield curve. So the yield curve has to stay inverted for a period of time. Nevertheless, March of 2000, the yield curve inverts and stays inverted. And then in April of 2001, which is about a year later, we have a recession. Then the yield curve completely inverts in July of 2006. And in the beginning of 2008, we have a recession. So that's about 18 months. What does that tell us? Well, that tells us that the yield curve is predictive of a recession between 9 and 18 months out. So between three quarters of a year and a year and a half. Therefore, plotting that on this metric, let's say the yield curve inverts in October, we can expect a recession sometime in the middle of 2023 or sometime in the beginning of 2024, if, that is, if, that, if that's predictive this cycle around. And that's something to keep note because that's going to affect market investments. Typically before then, the stock market will go into a bear market. We will see the precious metals price tend to rise as confidence in the U.S. economy falters. If we start seeing the dollar receding from its record highs right now, that could be bullish for precious metals. There's a lot to take in on this, but this gives you an early warning forecast that there's a recession in the works. Now, of course... The key thing is, is that my default rates model has been predictive for the last three recessions, and it too has triggered, it has triggered and flagged that the interest rates were too high. Yet, if the Federal Reserve raises interest rates 
only to 3.3%, that won't be enough to trigger my model and say that interest rates are too high. This will put my model to the test right now of whether it is at more, more predictive than the yield curve or not. Either way, the yield curve has this track record, once again, of going all the way back to the 1960s, really the 1950s on this, since data on interest rates was aggregated. And if I were a betting person, I'd probably stick with the yield curve because there may be missing data in my model. So we'll see what who turns out to be right in this. Could turn out that the model and the yield curve both be right because the 10-year treasury could be forced upward throughout time and may force up to 4%. And then we'll see if the Federal Reserve raises interest rates to 4% or not. We'll see. Anyways, guys, that's all that I have for this video. I hope that you enjoyed it. I'm probably going to create a new playlist and put this under yield curve analysis, kind of separating things out. It's sort of like a recession watch playlist using the yield curve because, again, inside the U.S. markets, there's really no other indicator or financial tool that's an easy to look at measuring stick of just how high interest rates are compared to what the economy can handle. And I do think that there's something about this yield curve that's just uncannily accurate in our post-World War II U.S. economy. Once again, guys, I thank you for watching this video. If you like the content that I provide, make sure that you show me some support. You can always like this video, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, leave me a comment, let me know what you think about all this. I would appreciate learning from you as much as you've learned from me. And always click that notification bell so that you're always notified whenever I do upload a video. And as always, I'll talk to you guys next time. This is Economic Analyst, signing out.